Today's top stories at NBR, the three-phase plan to deal with Omicron, a finding that the economy will be disrupted by the outbreak, first approval to export funds to parts of Asia, and there's more coming right up. Kia ora and welcome to NBR Today, a wrap of the day's top business stories from the authority in New Zealand business news since 1970, nbr.co.nz. It's Wednesday, January 26th. I'm Paul Brennan. Thanks again for joining us. Villa Maria Estate was valued at $190 million in the receivership sale of its holding company to Marlborough Wine Company in Devon last August, the latest receiver's report says. Meanwhile, receiver's calibre partners say two legal claims brought against them by the winery's founder, Sir George Fistinich, will be vigorously defended. The winery had in November 2020 said it was selling surplus land around its Auckland headquarters and looking to raise capital to fund growth plans. But last May, Brendan Gibson and Neil Jackson of Calibre Partners were appointed receivers to FFWL Limited, the 100% shareholder of the Villa Maria estate, to bring the process to a close. FFWL was owned by the winery's founder and last July was revealed to owe banks close to $212 million. The receivership did not affect Villa Maria's ongoing business or its overseas subsidiaries. Once Omicron cases start to number in the thousands each day, only household contacts of cases will have to isolate. At the same time, workers in critical industries will be able to go to work if they are asymptomatic and return a negative rapid antigen test, even if they are close contacts of cases. Associate Health Minister Dr Ayesha Varel announced the details of the government's three-phase Omicron plan today. Two years into this pandemic... Many of us are still unaccustomed to having COVID around us, but it's important to remember that COVID-19 is a different foe to what it was in the beginning. Associate Health Minister Dr Ayesha Varel. A new report has unsurprisingly found that New Zealand's economic recovery will be disrupted by the Omicron outbreak. New Zealand moved to the red light setting under the COVID-19 protection framework at the weekend after it became clear Omicron had started to spread in the community. Economic consultancy Infometrics has identified limits on events and hospitality, the likelihood of large numbers of workers being off work and difficulties in finding some goods as key challenges the economy will face. Infometrics principal economist Brad Olson said restrictions on activity were expected to keep economic activity 2-3% to below normal levels, costing about $190 million a week. Merger and acquisition activity involving New Zealand company targets continue to boom in the fourth quarter of 2021, bringing the full 2021 year of deal value to $20.4 billion, over 124 transactions, according to merger market data quoted by law firm Simpson Grierson. Deal volume was up 55% and deal value increased by 397% in 2021 compared with 2020. The proposed $1.7 billion merger of Vocus Orcon and Two Degrees just squeaked into the 2021 period, while other notable Q4 transactions included the $2.3 billion acquisition of Wetter Digital by Unity Software and the sale of Heritage Life Care's property portfolio to Centuria for $291 million. Simpson Grierson partner James Hawes told NBR he believes a high level of activity will continue in 2022. The head of the NZX's funds management business says an approval to export its funds to parts of Asia will open up a pool of capital orders of magnitude larger than New Zealand. Smart shares in the Financial Markets Authority announced today Wednesday that the fund manager had been approved as a passport fund under the Asia Regional Funds Passport, which launched in early 2019. Chief Executive Hugh Stevens was a member of the group chaired by Craig Stobbo, appointed by the government in 2010 to look at how New Zealand could position itself as an international funds domicile. The full details of those stories and more are at nbr.co.nz right now. Tomorrow at NBR, in his politics column, Brent Edwards asks, is there much the government can do in response to Omicron? I'm Paul Brennan. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow from around lunchtime for the morning's NBR trending stories. Then same time, same place, right here again from 5.30 tomorrow for another NBR Today.